Hey folks, thanks for joining. We'll get started here in just a few minutes. Just trying to round up a few more of the maintainers here to get them on the call so that we can do our vote in a little bit here. Thanks for standing by. Hey folks, to those of you who are just joining, we are, uh, we'll, we'll get started here in just a couple of minutes. I'm still trying to, we, we have a vote that we are going to do during this community call and I'm trying to round up more of the maintainers to get them on the call here, but I think another call is running long.
All right, we've got a few more people joining here. Sorry for the delay. Let's see, I'm just gonna take a quick roll count. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, seven. That should be quorum. We have, nine, nine. we have nine, right? We have nine total. Yeah. yeah. So we have we have a quorum now. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for bearing with us while we rounded some people up here. Uh, we are go ahead, going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to share my screen real quick. Um, so today's, that's the wrong screen, sorry. There we go. Okay, uh, today's agenda is a little bit light, but we do have a vote to bring on new maintainers and as well as a demo of Firefly Corda integration. So at our last community call, we wanted to have a vote and there were some questions, some great questions that came up about just the process and uh, there were a lot of things that need to be clarified. So since then, we have clarified some of those things. Uh, there has been a, a pull request and an update to the maintainers doc in the Firefly core uh, repo. And there's also been some change to the GitHub structure and teams and permissions and things like that. I won't go into all those details, but Essentially, in each of the repos now, we have a list of the maintainers for that repo. And then there's a link to the wiki page, which has the list of all of the maintainers of the, the Hyperledger Firefly project proper. And if you want to see who all the maintainers are on a per repo basis, you can see that in GitHub now. And there is a, a list of all of the repos and then uh, their respective maintainers on this list here. So that's how things are structured. So uh, we're going to hold a vote today to add two new maintainers. Uh, just to clarify, so the questions that came up last time is the vote to, to add them to a particular repo. The answer to that is, is no. Uh, and you can read about that in the details of the maintainer process here. Uh, the specific decision of which GitHub repos the maintainer is given responsibility for uh, does not require a vote and is left up to the discretion of the existing maintainers for that repo. And that's just handled through uh, the access to a specific repo. This is handled through GitHub Teams. So the vote is to add someone to this list here that we have on the screen. Uh, and that sort of designates them as a, uh, a someone who holds a, a shared responsibility for the project and uh, meets the expectations and requirements of being a maintainer. Uh, so does that make sense? Any, are there any questions before I make the motion to officially vote? Okay. Um, I, I suppose we should probably do each of them separately. Um, so I will, I will motion to add uh, Matt as a maintainer to the Hyperledger Firefly project. Uh, do we have any seconds? I'll second. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Jim, how, how do, do we just want to uh, roll yeah. call verbally? Roll call is okay. one at a time. Okay. Sorry, let me just switch. I'm going to stop screen sharing for this so I can see the Zoom screen. Maybe good measure to use different orders between the two. Uh, sure, two of sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm I'm taking notes and I'm just going to call your name uh, so that the, the motion here, which has been seconded is to add Matt as a maintainer and I just say yay or nay and we'll start with Andrew. Uh, I vote yes. Okay. Uh, Hayden. Yay. Alex. I vote yes. Benoed. I vote yes. Jim. I vote yes. Peter. I vote yes. I vote yes as well. And I believe that is everyone that we have present, and that is a majority. So the, the motion passes. Uh, I motion to add Chung as a maintainer. Pardon me. Uh, if I second the motion. Okay. I'll second that. Peter, second. Ah, thank you, Peter. All right. Uh, Jim. Uh, I vote yes. Alex. I vote yes. 
Andrew. Yes. Vinod. I vote yes. Hayden. I vote yes. Peter. I vote yes. And I vote yes as well. Uh, did I miss? I think I think I, I would try to randomize the order that time. So I think uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yeses. Uh, that is unanimous, and uh, we have a quorum. So both motions pass. Congrats. Welcome, Matt, who uh, I believe is on vacation at the moment. And uh, welcome, Chung. Glad to have you officially now a, a maintainer. I will go ahead and get you guys added to the, the proper groups in GitHub, and uh, then, then you'll get right access to things. So awesome. Thank you, uh, Thank you everyone. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just wanted to recognize uh, the amazing contributions that you guys have already made and uh, looking forward to continuing to, to do more in the future. So thanks, everybody. OK, uh, that is our first agenda item. Thanks, everyone, for uh, for going through that. Um, and our, our next agenda item is uh, Jim is going to talk a little bit about Corda support with Firefly and may possibly have a, a small demo of kind of where things are at today. But I don't want to put you on the spot if that's not ready to go. No, um, I think it still works, so we'll give it a try. So this is Jim. Um, I'm part of Kaleido. Um, I, I wrote uh, Fab Connect, which is the connector for Firefly to talk to uh, Fabric. Um, it can all also be used as, as a standalone component to provide uh, RESTful capabilities in front of a fabric network. And uh, in the past few days, I've started uh, uh, revisiting uh, Corda to see what would it take uh, to get Corda supported in Firefly as well. So obviously, Firefly has uh, a standard set of interfaces that all connectors need to uh, needs to follow. Um, <clears throat> so I've taken a approach uh, initially to write everything in Java so that uh, it'll be a Java program uh, to speak the, the APIs that Firefly needs uh, for a connector. Uh, this is uh, Java is necessary because uh, unlike other um, protocols that either uses uh, standard uh, JSON RPC with HTTP or you know protobuf or gRPC. Uh, Corda uses a Java specific um, uh, interface, which is JMS. Uh, and as far as I know, it's not available anywhere else in a different language. So Java is a requirement. Um, so initially, my approach was I'm going to write everything in Java, just have it speak the same language that so far we've written uh, in Golang for both Ethereum and Fabric. Um, however, uh, from a uh, in the office discussion, you know, yesterday with Peter and Hayden, we realized there may be a, a alternative approach to sort of shrink the footprint of Java in the solution and use a lot of Go uh, so that we don't have to solve the same problem again. Um, so you probably have heard this from either Peter or Matt before that uh, the, the project Firefly Transaction Manager is sort of a toolkit uh, to create new uh, connectors you know, for any arbitrary um, uh, DLTs. So far, it's only been proven with Ethereum. Uh, we were going to um, re-implement or, or refactor FET Connect uh, to fit into that toolkit as well. We haven't done that yet, but I'm going to give it a try to see if I can do that for, uh, for uh, Corda. The, the idea is uh, we will uh, just run uh, the absolute necessary pieces um, of the code on Java, uh, which is, you know, obviously has to be using the SDK from Corda, the uh, Corda RPC ops interface uh, to talk to the, uh, the nodes natively through 
JMS and all that. But then have, have the rest of the code in Go talk to that process uh, through either a GNI interface or uh, I heard there's a new approach called Go SDK, which Hayden introduced me to. So we'll see how that goes. But today I'm going to show you a quick demo of what I've got so far with a pure Java implementation. So hopefully everything still works. Um, okay, so let me kill this first so I can show you how it's launched. Um, <clears throat> this is um, this is in the Corda. Let me make it a little bigger. Okay, um, so this is in the Corda Connect um, repository. Um, and after I build it, I'll la I launch it. I want to show you the launch because um, you are giving the list of cord app jars uh, to the class path. And that's so far the, uh, the only approach to have this runtime um, dynamically load your core, core app uh, classes, you know, for both the, the flow side of things, but also the contract side of things. Um, so you are uh, providing those jars uh, to this runtime uh, through this um, uh, technique so that they are just part of the uh, class path uh, from the very beginning. I attempted to use uh, URL uh, class loader uh, to load them in at runtime, but only could only get it partially working. I was able to load <clears throat> all the classes, but somehow the annotations were not recognized. Uh, I realize this is uh, kind of a common issue with dynamic loading uh, of classes. So I tried a whole bunch of things um, that um, you know people online were suggesting, none of them were working. Um, so as a result, so far the approach that works is you have to provide the core app jars on the class pass when you launch the process. So you do that, and then <clears throat> the application will launch, and then it'll, you'll go through the configuration, connect to the database, and then connect to the Corda node. And now it's kind of ready to go. It even uh, restored a bunch of uh, subscriptions for events. I'll show you how that works. So now let's look at... Um, <clears throat> some API calls. So the things that you can do uh, at the moment is you can submit transactions. Let me go ahead, let me go ahead and do that. So this is a um, this is using the IOU um, sample from Corda. So to trigger a transaction and in this case we're just doing the issue issue of the IOU note. <clears throat> um, so there is a issuer and there's a borrower. Um, and <clears throat> what you need to specify in the payload is you need to, you got to tell Corda Connect what is your uh, class that will trigger the flow. And that is like this in the string. Notice the inner class uh, with this syntax. That's that's a standard Java that's syntax for inner classes. Jim, I'm still seeing the, the oh. terminal. Oh, sorry. Let me reshare. I need to reshare the screen. Sorry. Uh, can you see uh, Postman? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, so <clears throat> as you can see, uh, flow initiator class is specified like this with the inner class. Um, and it only takes two parameters to kick off the transaction. One is how much you like to issue the note for, and then what is the what is the party uh, as the borrower? Who are you issuing this uh, IOU to? And <clears throat> you just give it a value that is part of the, um, the party's uh, distinguished uh, name. So as you know, Corda uses um, identities, um, uses uh, PKI certificates for identities. Uh, you just have to specify a partial string uh, that's unique enough for that for that party's uh, DNA. Oh.
think the court may not be right. Okay. I need court. Uh, okay, here we go. Bad request. Okay. I may have broken something. Oh, okay, that works better this time. So as you can see, it successfully kicked off a transaction and this is the resulting state. Um, value is this lender borrower and there's a linear ID generated for that. So the state can continue to evolve um, and you know the signers and everything is, is here. So this is all deserialized from the uh, transaction result returned by the node. And you can see uh, a bunch of um, locks uh, from the runtime. Okay, so what if I want to listen to, to some events? <clears throat> I want the, uh, the, the, the connector to send me uh, a notification whenever there's a, a successful event. So I'm going to create a event stream. So creating event stream um, requires you to specify um, what is the topic. So <clears throat> um, it supports WebSocket as the channel to deliver the event to the client. Uh, you have to give it a topic so that because the WebSocket can be a shared pipe between the server and the client, you can you know, partition uh, that pipe into multiple topics. So you can listen to a different event streams. So you give it a topic and then you can create that event. I think I've already created that. So you can see that's already here. And once you have the, uh, so event stream represents the, the, the pipe uh, in the form of web, web socket between the server and the client. But then we also need to tell the connector what types of event we are interested in. So this is where you create a subscription. Based on the same uh, event stream, you can uh, create many subscriptions to deliver different types of events to the client. This particular one, I'm gonna uh, ask it to give me any, all the events that are uh, emitted uh, with this state uh, for this, uh, that's part of uh, this flow. Um, and Corda doesn't have a concept of blocks unlike other DLTs, every transaction is kind of standalone. So the only thing to kind of um, um, signify a, a, a point in time in backing history to say, all the nodes, you know, this node may have been running for a while and my subscription don't always have to start from now to later events. It can start from a historical, Point. Uh, and the only, only way to specify that is with the timestamp. So that's what I'm doing here. So I already created that, um, which is like this. So now we're ready to listen for events. Um, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> create a WebSocket client and I'm going to tell it that, hey, um, I'm going to listen to this event topic. Okay, you can see as soon as I told the server I'm interested in any events in this topic, I've already got pushed a bunch of events. So <clears throat> once, I'm, once I acknowledge there are more events coming through, um, so we don't have any more events anymore. So let's see uh, what happens when we push a new transaction. We're gonna give a different value, maybe 20, still the same borrower. Let's see what happens. Okay, so you see this new events now got pushed to us and we've got the, the new transaction details. So that's as far as I've got. Um, if you've used Accorda, you can appreciate why this might be useful to you. Uh, 
uh, writing a client call is, is, is not very trivial. Um, you need to use the SDK, you need to do a lot of um, quarter specific um, programming, uh, preparing the transaction and all that. Um, whereas here, it's just restful calls with, with JSON payload and using WebSocket to listen for events, all the standard web application uh, techniques. So it can be a really useful tool uh, to build uh, performant uh, web applications against Corda. So that's it for today. Um, more to come. Um, so this is just getting started. Uh, there is still a lot of work to do. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Thanks for the demo. I uh, really appreciate that. Looking forward to seeing where this goes. Um, any questions from anyone else on the demo that, that Jim just showed or on the topic of Corda with Firefly? Not a, not a lot of Corda fans, huh? <laughs> Oh, uh, there's there's some out there. We, we get a, yeah. a quarter question every now and then at this court. Uh, okay, cool. Well, I, at this time, we can open it up to any other topics, uh, any other questions that people have or things that people want to discuss related to Firefly. The floor is open. Ideally, following up with that, I'd like to talk about getting us on the agenda for next month to walk through the Tesla's connector. We, we're deploying it this week into production. Absolutely. Yeah, we would love to see it. Uh, that would be really cool. Yeah, I'd love to see that. I'm sure there are more Tezos fans than Corda. And do you do you want me, is there anyone you want me to invite ahead of time to review code before we do the demo and have our conversation next time? Um, yeah, do you want to, so you can follow up with me either on Discord or yeah. via email. Uh, that would I know be how to get a hold of you. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay. You, you said you do know how to get a hold of me or you need to? I so do, I yeah. Okay, yes. perfect, okay. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. I, I would be super excited about that. Um, and I, something we could chat about as well, but is that something that uh, there's a potential to to possibly open source or contribute? Oh yeah, back? we're contributing it back. Yeah. Oh, that, that that would be wonderful. That would be, yeah, that's that's really exciting. So we, we can chat about that and the details around that as well. Yep, and that the intention is to do that sometime next month as well. So where the Warner... Our Warner Media one is going live, and they're all doing all of their badges and NFT stuff all for their loyalty all on Tezos. So this will be running all those. So that's awesome. Cool. Yeah, but I, I'm I'm super excited about that. So let's let's chat on that. Um, so community calls are usually the second Wednesday of the month. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks for that, Eddie. Um, any, any other topics that folks want to discuss today? All right, if, if not, um, like I said, the agenda was a bit light today, um, but if not, I'm happy to give folks the rest of the half hour back to get back to other things they need to do. Uh, so last call, otherwise I'll shut it down. All right. Thanks, everybody. Hope you have a great rest of your day and see you next time for uh, an exciting Tezos connector demo. Looking forward to that. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.